Okay, so I recently got done taking an online class and it was called um, Sketchbook Revival. And um, there was tons of people taking it and it was free and it was wonderful and Karen Aben did a fantastic job putting it all together. But one of the things that came out of it was this concept of mandalas. And so I really liked it because I'm, I'm a scientist and an artist and so the geometry is a big thing for me. And one of the things I had been working on previously had been trying to figure out a color wheel that got all of my colors all in one area because I got two reds, two blues, two yellows, gray, sap green, and burnt sienna. I also have a purple, a cobalt purple, but I don't really like it a whole lot. This is from my notes from the class. It was really cool how she did it. And so I came up with color wheel and I, I tossed around a lot of things before I finally figured out how I wanted to do it and how I wanted to set it up. And I tested it out with my colored pencils. And there was only a couple combinations. I mean, you can see all my combinations here of everything as I go around. There's only a couple combinations that I don't have, and so I'm going to put those on the bottom. But I think it's going to turn out really nice. And I'm going to show you how that's going to look. But, um, so, how I got to this point was I made, um, I found the center. This is actually going to end up going up because I have a beam right next to me off to this side. And so this is going to stand up over there. Um, so it's actually going to end up hanging up like this, which is fine. And then I'm going to have my color code key on down here. But, um, so what I did was I found the center here and then I came down a ways and I made an eight inch circle by doing, um, I marked a four inch spot and a two inch spot. And then I set my compass on there and I measured out to the eight inch and I made a circle and then I put my compass on one spot on the circle and I made a mark here, mark here and then I put my compass on that mark, mark here, mark here and all the way around I connected those marks these are these lines, okay and then I came in and I made a two inch circle by lining up my compass with um, my two inch mark there. I made a two inch circle. Now everywhere that that circle intersected one of these lines, I set my compass and I made another circle. So that's where all these little inner circles came from, was from where that line intersected the, the center two inch circle. Now, I'm kind of running you through this a little bit fast. Um, I'm sure that there are places online to look that up. Um, oh, and I should have wrote down have her name in my notes and I will Jane Jane Snedden Perver Peaver Peaver Snedden Anyway, look her up. She's fantastic, absolutely amazing. Anyway, so I'm going to connect the intersections of these small circles through the center. Make another line there. And this will divide up my circle into almost perfect sections. I mean, it's not computer perfect, but it's, it's hand perfect. And there's a difference, but there's a really satis nice satisfaction from doing it by hand. And I like that. And so some of these lines are going to get erased, but so that has everything sectioned up really nicely. And then I'm going to, from these spots, from within the, the, the two inch circles, I'm going to make that just a little bit smaller. And it's not precise, it's just a little bit, going about a half inch down right now. Yeah, that looks nice. I'm just going from the intersection down to where it touches the 
the inside circle. I want a little bit over there. It's okay. It's not going to be perfect, but it's going to look pretty anyway. I learned a lot from that class. And, um, well, from, there was a bunch of different classes within it. I would say that the Mandela class and of course Nina Rycroft, I really, I mean I've taken her class but it's still wonderful to, to learn from her. I mean, how many different classes I take from her, I always learn something new, which I think is really wonderful. Um, and I know that right now I should be working on my portfolio but my color wheel has just been bugging me. Because currently, I have a number of things going on. I only have one area to put. I, I've reorganized my desk so it, it's not quite as, there's not quite as much stuff falling in on me. But what I used to have are these sheets and what I would do is I'd start off with a thick, pe uh, thick like, like I would fill a cup of this with burnt sienna and then I would slowly add a drop or two of phthalo blue, you know, not dropping it in, but just mix a little bit on the brush and drop it in and mix it. And then I'd do a line and slowly mix it up, which is fine, but it takes a long time. And it's somewhat useful, but I keep getting more colors, and then the whole thing got cumbersome and big. And then, so where's my... So I started doing this where... Um, and I currently have this all on a shower hook hanging off of my, my cart. And it's got all my little, you know, I got color swatches for each of my um, watercolor palettes. And then, so, so this is another watercolor palette. I've got, you know, the rose marked and, because they don't actually have names written on them. So this, what I did was, this is more of a, a layering or a wash. Um, sheet and so what I did was I put down the color and then I did Hansa, so this is for my Hansa yellow so I did all my colors and then I did a layer um, here I did a layer of Hansa first and then I put the color over and then here I did the Hansa yellow second and here I did a gradient of these colors and then I did a Hansa over top, a wash over top of it after it dried. This is all layered after dry. And then here um, I just started, so I did a light wash all the way down and then I let it dry and then I did another wash all the way down, let it dry, another wash all the way down, let it dry, etc, etc. And let me see if I can... I'm doing the same thing with these. And it's nice, and it's going to be useful because um, you don't get the same color when you put yellow down first, and and then so you put your yellow down, and then you put your blue. It's different than if you put your blue and then your yellow. It's it's not the same color that comes out. Um, and it's nice to have the gradient, you know, to have an idea of the lightness to dark. But. I want to be able to have my mixes all in one place so I can just look around the circle and find what I want to find. And right now I can't. So that's where this came out. And this is all my colored pencil sheets. And this is my skin tone. So I did a combination of both of my, so I had two yellows and two reds. And then I have a burnt sienna. And so I did a combination of all of them to try and get an idea of Caucasian skin tones because one of my characters is Caucasian. I need to redo this, but in darker shades, but I haven't got there yet. So these are some of my my color sheets that I worked on. And now I'm trying to find a way to kind of combine it all into one spot so it's not quite so haphazard. It's still going to be haphazard, but it might not be as haphazard. Anyway, so how I'm going to do this. Now I'm going to end up speeding this up, 
So, so this will be my Hansa. Spelled that way. N A P H T H. Oh, that's special. So, okay. So, all these are going to go around. And then I'm gonna have it. So they'll go from red to yet to blue, and the center will be the main color. Now, I still get my mix of rose and red and blues mixed with the yellows because on the yellow scale they're already being mixed. But they'll be mixed again over here. So, um, and then the next line in is going to be. Um, from the secondary, so so the first line. I should do my going in another half. So this is your primaries, reds. So that'll be your naphthol to phthalo blue. So naphthol to here, phthalo blue over here. Then this one will be your secondary, so it will be the quinacridone rose to Prussian blue. And then this one will be burnt sienna through sap green. And then here it will come down from the full color Indian yellow down into um, Payne's gray at the center. And that will cover most everything except for the combination of Indian yellow to Hansa yellow and then the combination of sap green to burnt sienna and sap green with phthalo or with Payne's gray and burnt sienna with Payne's gray which I'm going to do down at the bottom so those three combinations will be down here. But that covers most of my colors. Now, I don't have my cobalt violet in there, and I'm okay with that because um, generally my cobalt violet has um, it has a very graininess to it, and I don't really like it that much. I like the purples I'm getting with my um, my Codracinum Rose mixed with uh, my blues, so that's fine by me. So if this isn't in there, I'm fine by that. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna keep going. I'm not going to talk anymore so I can fast forward through all this, but you get the picture.
Okay, so here it is done. I messed up lots of places, but I think I have, and since it's a reference for me, it doesn't really matter if it's perfect or not, but so I cut out some circles to cover up the spots that I messed up. Um, I ended up over here where like phthalo blue would have mixed with Prussian blue and then Prussian blue would have mixed with phthalo blue. I ended up putting in the um, Hansa yellow and the Indian yellow there and I did the same thing with the naphthal red so that um, and the Kodachrome rose it moved that way as well so that I got more mixes because you know putting just a little bit you know you can see how there wasn't as much here and I think the Hansa yellow I initially did um, filling up these cups and that was actually too much paint I ended up um, doing just a little swatch and adding slowly adding into that and that worked a lot better to get a more pigmented color change um, I don't think I'll change it but it's just something to keep in mind when you do it yourself I might redo this one but whatever anyway and then coming in onto the paints gray so this is pure paints gray and then out to each color and I think I might do one more row on the Hansa yellow, the naphthol red, and the phthalo blue, since those are on try, and do um, the mix of the Hansa and the Indian right there, and the mix of the phthalo and the Prussian right there, and the mix of the naphthol and the quadacrylone rose right there. And that covers most everything except for the mix. Like I said, I'm going to do a mix of the sap green and burnt sienna, and then I had to do sap green and and so here and here and here, but I don't know where I'm going to put that. So um, I don't want to mess this symmetry up. That's really nice symmetry, so I might put it down here. But um, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, as a reference sheet, it's going to be very nice for me to be able to see pretty quickly my options for mixing. So, have a good evening. Oh, bye. Okay, so here's my finished mixing chart. I have all my colors listed, and I have a, a key up in the corner so I know which line goes for, you know, left to right, left to right, one, two, three. And then down here I have the sap green to the burnt sienna mixing with paints gray and then mixing the burnt sienna with the sap green this way. And then over here I have a glazing grid. Um, so what I did is I, I went through and put each color down this way all the way through the same um, intensity all the way through and then I glazed over top of it going this way. So if I want to know if um, if I want to do so Hansa yellow if I want phthalo blue glazing over top of Hansa yellow it's here but if I do Hansa yellow over phthalo blue it's here and you can see how much of a difference there is. Um, and that that's just the way it is with glazing it depends on which layer you put down first um, so, so yeah, I'm, I'm happy with how it turned out. So that's, I have my color mixing chart there. I have my nice TJ Maxx rack that's really helped me, um, organize stuff. So this is kind of a different view of my workstation. I mean, I got my pens, I got my happy hippo that's holding stuff and my water. And then my various mixing trays are all there. And then my kid's stuff is nearby too, so that they can join me. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy my, my new mixing chart and I hope that it's helped you to make your own. So have a nice day. Bye.